Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Ian Bell's The Harlot's Progress, which was live streamed from the Teata Andavin about two years ago on October 23, 2013, and this also marked its premiere ten days prior. The conductor was Mikko Frank, the director was Jens Daniel Herzog, the set design was handled by Mattis Neithat, the costumes were handled by Zibilla Gedecka, the choreographer was Ramses Ziegel. The lights were handled by Jürgen Koss. And the dramaturgy was handled by Hans-Peter Flings. Now, the thing about this opera is that it's not a spin-off of Stravinsky's The Rake's Progress. It's its own story, and it was based on the six paintings done by William Hogarth of the same name. It tells the story of Maul Hackabout and how she was conned into becoming a mistress by a procurist by the name of Mother Elizabeth Needham. And at first, things go well. I mean, she is the mistress of several rich men. But all of a sudden, she ends up becoming a prostitute after several things go awry. And she ends up bearing a son through illegitimate means. And then she dies of child from childbirth and even that of syphilis as well. And she basically dies at a very tragic young age at only 23 years old. So while The Rake's Progress was very well known for its satire, dark humor, and sarcasm... The Harlot's Progress is darker, more depressing, and it's very hard to sit through in just one seating. You really need a lot of Kleenex because this story is very much depressing and it also reflects in the style of music. There are no moments in which it can go light and happy. It's pretty much somber all the way through and it's just full of it's just full of sadness all the way through there's no moments of happy moments there are no moments where you could just sit down and smile but you're just totally well frustrated and even very much sad for Maul's fate because she does start off as this young, innocent, naive girl. But then, as the play rolls along, she starts becoming this mother of this illegitimate child, and then she dies. And then the cycle continues with Mother Needham still alive and well. So the story is very hard to sit through. And it also poses a very interesting challenge for a lot of the singers, which I'll get to later in this review. And just like a lot of other, well, tales of fallen women like La Traviata, Lulu, Lady Macbeth of the Mitzens District, well, like I said, this is a lot darker because this talks about a young woman who is conned into being a mistress, but then has ended up in the verge of self-destruction. So let's get on to what I thought about the production the singers, and the conducting. Now, the production of this opera looks rather bleak and, well, quite disturbing to say the least. Yes, I get that this opera is supposed to be set in England in the, in the 18th century, but this production made it set in, like, the... 19th century to even the 20th century England. And not to mention we see bottles of Coca-Cola being sold on the streets in this production, which I kind of found very interesting and kind of head-scratching. Not to mention in the last few moments we see a lot of like these coal-like substances that are thrown around and basically rolled around by the characters, most especially Maul, which I found rather intriguing as it does talk about her, well, 
about her innocence and youth being burnt up to ashes. So that was kind of an interesting bit of symbolism. And unlike the painting, it ends with a young girl who is dressed up as Maul Hackabout, well, who is basically the cycle of the ever continuing cycle of Mother Needham saying that, okay, she'll be the next bait in our need for mistresses. So that's what I found very interesting about the production. The costumes were very colorful as well, and they're very nice to look at, though they don't really remind me of 18th century England. Like I said, they remind me more of England in the 19th to 20th century, or even that of the early 21st century. So overall, the production may be bleak, and it may not look like as if though that I was in 18th century England, but it really does convey the opera very well that it's a very bleak and depressing story. And I thought that the cinematography done for this live stream was very well done, and I thought it was very crisp and clean. The singing was just fabulous. Now, any interpreter of Maul Hackabout needs to have a lyric coloratura voice that can be very flexible, but also has to have moments of uh, dramatic quality as well. And Diana Damrau does not disappoint. Besides, Diana Damrau, as I've said many times, is one of my most favorite sopranos of all time because I really love how she manages to get herself in the drama. And I really love the attention she pays to the text. And also of just how she does everything with such flair and abandon. And with her as Maul Hackabout, she was able to provide all of that. Playing her innocence at first, and then her doubts, and then her, and then her madness, and then her anguish in the end as well. I thought it was just a very riveting portrayal, as it was one of the most harrowing portrayals that I've seen in terms of any performance done by Diana Damrau. What more can you expect from Damrau? She is not just a very fabulous singer with such a very flawless technique, but her acting is so involving and it's just so awesome to watch. Playing the role of the Procurus Mother Needham, which is a character mezzo role, almost verging on the dramatic mezzo repertory, is none other than Marie McLaughlin. Now, for those of you who don't know Marie McLaughlin, she started out as a light lyric soprano who also ventured into some of the roles from the coloratura soprano repertoire. For example, she sang roles like Gilda from Rigoletto, Violetta Valeri from La Traviata, Musetta from La Boheme, Susana from The Marriage of Figaro, and many others. Oh, and even Pamina from Magic Flute. Then, in the mid-2000s, late 2000s, she started to sing some more lyric mezzo roles like Marcellina from Marriage of Figaro and Meg Page from Falstaff, and even recently, one time with Diana Damrau as Alisa from Lucia de la Mermoire. I thought she was able to play Mother Needham as such a nasty character. And yes, there was a real-life Mother Needham, and who unfortunately passed away 1731 after being on trial on the pillory. Yeah, so she was able to play Mother Needham as a very, a very cruel character who was willing to take advantage of any sap that goes in her way. And I just love that type of raw energy that she puts into this thankless character. Her voice is, well, I thought it was really good. And she really does know how to be very versatile in her repertoire, especially the current repertoire that she's been having since the mid-2000s. So it was just a very flawless portrayal and with such seething energy. Then we have the role of of Mr. Lovelace, sung by Christopher Gillett. This role is a character tenor role, and with Christopher Gillett's voice, I've heard it, and it's sort of in tatters as of, as of when I heard the recording. It does sound a bit 
tattery. But what more can you expect? He has been singing for several years, and the age really does show in his voice. But he was able to make up for it in terms of his acting capabilities and also his flair for drama. Then we have the role of Kitty, sung by a young Irish mezzo by the name of Tara Erot. Now, Tara Erot was basically a mezzo that I've heard a lot in recent years. I've heard her a lot as Octavia and from Rose and Cavalier, and a lot of the roles from the lyric mezzo roles like Hansel from Hansel and Gretel, and even from the coloratura mezzo repertoire, like Angelina from Cenerentola and Rosina from Barbiere di Sevilla. I thought she was just a very sweet kitty. She was able to bring such a sweet, mellow, and very much a gorgeous technique to her voice that she was able to bring out that innocence that really makes Kitty such a sweet and caring character. And her technique was just flawless. It was a very flawless technique that she had and an extremely enjoyable portrayal as well. And then we have Nathan Gunn, who sang the role of, let's see here, James Dalton, one of Mal Hackabout's lovers. He was able to bring that sort of swagger in Dalton and also a very fine voice that is also needed in such a character. Yes, his character is also quite thankless as well, but he managed he managed to really sing his heart out so well and really act it out so well. He was able to portray this rebellious character with such abandon that it becomes so involving, which is no surprise because Nathan Gunn is basically a baritone who has been specializing in a lot of the lyric baritone repertoire. For example, like Papageno from Magic Flute and Surga from Le Pêcheur de Pelle or The Pearl Fishers. So he really has a lot of experience under his belt and it really does show. Then we have Nicola Teste in some character roles, namely the coach driver, the officer, and the jailer. A very fine voice, and yes, he has to play such very thankless characters, but other than that, it was just a great portrayal. And the conducting was just fabulous. Mr. Frank was able to portray the somber moments of this opera really well and with such great flair and abandon. So overall, this was such a magnificent production that I saw live streamed. Yes, I know this is sort of a belated review, but I had a lot of personal obligations to do. So yeah, I kind of feel sorry that I had to really post this review really late, but Better late than never, because what I was able to get from the premiere of this opera was that I really enjoyed all the singers, and yes, the story was depressing as hell, but it was it was just absolutely fine all throughout with such fine singers, and I really do hope that this opera is released on DVD. Maybe give it some more time, I don't know. Maybe give it some more time to it to be released onto DVD. We'll see what happens. I do hope that a lot of the major major DVD licensing companies that licenses opera and concerts really do release this opera onto DVD because especially when it concerns to uh, Diana Damrau in her portrayal of Mal Hackabout. Just please, if you really want to release this opera on DVD, then I I say go for it. You won't be disappointed because, well, Diana Damra as Ma Hakabout was just fabulous alongside the other portrayals of such great singers like Marie, Marie McLaughlin, Nathan Gunn, Nicola Teste, Tara Erot, and Christopher Gillett. I really enjoyed all the performances and I do hope that this gets released onto DVD. Well, that's all for now, and this summer, it's going to be a lot more reviews coming along your way, and who knows, maybe I might do an anime review, a TV show review, and, well, we'll see what happens. So until then, this is Antonio signing off, and have a great day, everybody.